hey, this is Mark, the other Chopstick guy, and I want to take you through a photo shoot that I just finished up with our friend Kiana, who is the 2024 Miss Cottonwood Rodeo. The first couple of shots, it's always, we say, it's the bullpen. So what I did is I had Kiana come out and we just went in the shade of the barn. It was a, a summer day here in Northern California, so it was rather warm. We got in the shade. We knew it was about three hours until sundown. And so we just kind of started to warm up and play around. This is the first time I've ever photographed somebody in some of these show chaps. So those chaps that she's wearing has her logos on there for Miss Cottonwood Rodeo. And they're very stiff. I wanted to kind of see how they were gonna react with the lighting. So we played around for a little bit and you'll notice the first um, couple of things that I had done. Somebody asked me, did you high speed sync all of these photos? Well, when I don't have to high speed sync, I don't. So. I didn't need to shoot this at a very shallow depth of field because I was shooting her up against the barn. And so it was okay that this texture was gonna be in focus. So I chose an aperture of about 7.1 and it required that I shot it here at a 200th of a second. And I really like what I was getting here uh, with these images. One of the things I will say is that, you know, you have to be careful anytime you're shooting somebody with a hat that you kind of have to play that game of, you don't want the light so low that it's flat lighting, but you also don't want it so high that it's casting a shadow across their eyes and making a dark spot on their face, unless that's kind of a moody look you're going for. So just be very aware when you're shooting with people with cowboy hats or big brims on their hats. Once we were warmed up, we decided we were gonna go out and challenge ourselves against that bright sunlight and there was a great fence right outside that uh, some of the horses were corralled up in. And I thought this was gonna be a good chance to get some nice, beautiful backlighting. So we were able to get Kiana up against that fence there. And at this point, this is when I needed to jump into high speed sync. So there was some power lines in the background way far out. I didn't wanna see those. I wanted those to go a little blurry. so. Um, I decided I would shoot this about 3.5. I didn't want to go too shallow because I knew it was important that not only is that her face was going to be in focus, but that if her legs were moving in or out, that I was still going to be able to read very sharply uh, what was written both on her sash, on her hat, on her chaps. And so I wanted a, a little bit of depth of field there. So I stayed around 3.5 to about 5.1. So a lot of my shots, 3.5 uh, F4 and a 25 hundredth of a second, which made me go into high speed sync. So I had to make sure I was controlling that light. Um, and it, it's just wonderful to be able to now shoot in bright daylight at a very shallow depth of field. So how cool is this? As Miss Cottonwood Rodeo, she won herself a brand new saddle. And so that was very important that we get those in the shot. So first we did is we set the saddle up next to her so she didn't have to hold that saddle for a really long time and we can get our pose down we can get our lighting we had to make sure because we were using the shade of a tree we had to make sure that we weren't getting too much of that specular light on her face be aware whenever you're shooting somebody in the shade that you're not getting those specular highlights on their face you don't want to ever tell yourself i'll fix it in post fix it while you're there, which did require that I had to move my light into a position that actually blocked out that sun coming across her face. And then when the light came on, it filled it back in. So, and tonight I was using my Westcott FJ400 with a medium Octabox on there. I would have preferred to shoot with my uh, Octa Large, but it was a little bit breezy. It wasn't too bad, but there was enough breeze that it was uh, uh, already difficult for my wife to hold the medium Octabox still, so I didn't want to go to that large uh, modifier. I love the shots then that she held onto the saddle, and we got her inside the gate. So this is just one little extra tip. When I shot her there, one thing we did is we opened the gate up because there's a lot of times, it's to me, it's a little subconscious of, you know, why is somebody standing next to a fence with a saddle? But if there's an open gate, it looks like she's coming through that gate. Your brain tells, I think, a little bit of a story. So I'm always thinking of those small details when I'm taking photos. All right, so then we felt like we were warmed up and it was time to bring on the horse. 
If you've never worked with a horse and a person in photography, I will tell you it's more difficult than it looks. I, my hat's off to people who do it well. Uh, same with people who shoot babies or little kids. It is a difficult genre because they're not going to do exactly what you want them to do. You can have the, the horse that is the most trained horse, and it's still a large animal that has its own ideas. So one of the things I will give you a tip is horses can be afraid of our soft boxes, especially, you know, when we're flashing uh, lights. So what we did is I went out into the field. The horse has never been into that field on this location. And I set up my soft box first before they brought the horse out. That way, when you introduce the horse to the field, the soft box is already there. So that horse just thinks it's part of the field. So um, Kiana's mom took the horse and walked back and forth around the soft box, let the horse realize there was nothing to be afraid of. And before we got anything uh, going, we went ahead after it, you know, was making sure that it wasn't going to react at all. We started flashing to flash just to see if it would react. And we acted normal. The horse just didn't do anything. So most of the time you're going to find that horses react very well uh, with flashes. But anytime you introduce something large and, and um, in their space, it can freak them out. So just be very aware of that. So we started to shoot with our flash and uh, got some beautiful photos. And then it was time she wanted to jump onto the horse bareback. And so she was wearing the chaps. She was a little afraid of the buckles and the chaps not being comfortable for the horse. So we just took a couple quick shots there and it was kind of fun to just get some shots and uh, try to coax the horse with carrots to look the way we want it to. So the other thing I will tell you, if you're shooting with horses, it's very important that you want to get the ears pointing forward and uh, horse people will appreciate that if you can get that done in those photos. So about an hour before sunset, the clouds were starting to build in a little bit. And so we were getting this nice, diffused, beautiful light. So we went out further into the field and we just started to shoot some natural light photos. You know that uh, I love natural light when it's good. And tonight was one of those nights when the natural light was really good. So we played around for about an hour inside that natural light, taking some shots of her walking back and forth down little trails and down the dirt road. And I thought we got some beautiful results there. Okay, then it happened. The sun started to set and we had the most beautiful sunset. It wasn't full of a lot of color, but it was beautiful golden color. And we were out in this field that had these beautiful backlit leaves or weeds. And uh, there was even a few purple flowers that you can see once in a while in some of the images. They weren't real prominent, but those backlit grasses, they just glowed and looked gorgeous. So at this time, again, I was shooting at a very shallow depth of field because, again, there's things in the background that they weren't really dominant, but I wanted them to go a little bit out of focus and I wanted to draw more attention to Kiana. So I shot at a shallower depth of field around 3.5. And again, this is where I went into high speed sync. I didn't need to overpower sunlight. So I didn't need that full blast of power that you get out of your light when you're not in high speed sync. Um, I was able to, you know, get plenty of light inside of high speed sync. And so these were shot at about an 800th to a 1200th of a second. And I'll put those on the screen, uh, what settings I was using. But when this starts to happen, this is incredible. This is so fun. Now take a look at this image. You're gonna notice that on the left side of the image, the sun flare or the sun ball is starting to creep out on her left side. Well, I put my light on the left side of the picture so that it looks as if that sunlight's wrapping around her. I always try to tell people when you set up your lighting outside, you can do whatever you want in the studio. You can do whatever you want outside as well. But I believe that if you light from the same side that the sun is on, it gives a more natural appearance. Cross lighting can look a little unnatural, but if that's the look you're going for, go ahead and do it. There's no set way of having to do it, but look at how beautiful these results are. All right, so walking back from the field, we came across this incredible little tractor sitting out there that's just kind of rotting away in the field. And how do you walk past something like that at night with that sunset and not get a photo like this? 
as the sun was setting, we got up against the fence. I love the light raking across this fence. So I had Kiana lean against the fence there. And I think we got some beautiful pictures there. One of the things I was struggling with is there's a shadow that the sun is casting on her against that fence. And then everything past her, it blocked the sunlight. So it didn't have that beautiful warm light raking across the fence. Um, I played a little bit with Photoshop trying to mimic that, but I wasn't really happy with the results. And in the end, I just kept it how it was. So while we were shooting these images on the fence, the sun actually completely set and we thought, it's done. It's time to go. Let's get the horse put away before it gets completely dark and get out of there. But on our way back, we got to the trailer and all of a sudden the color grabs some more sky. You know, when that sun drops down, don't ever leave if you can help it. Wait for that sun to completely go because sometimes five or 10 minutes later, some color starts to happen in the sky. And that's exactly what started to happen. So I said, hurry, run back. Let's get you sitting on the fender of the trailer and let's get some last shots here. And I'm glad that we did. And I love these results. All right, I'm glad you stuck with me. I want one more thing that I want to share with you. So during the night, I had a brand new trigger. And when it got into that evening part of the shoot, something happened with my trigger and it kind of went a little haywire. I don't know if I had a firmware issue or if it was just a uh, something wrong with the, the defect in the trigger because it was brand new. First time I ever used it. But here's the tip I want to give you. If you're doing this for fun, just go out and have fun doing it. But if you're doing this like I have to do, and you're doing this to uh, as a living or trying to get paid to do it, always have a second trigger. I will tell you, if it wasn't for the second trigger, I wouldn't have been able to get the final shots of the evening. So uh, Westcott went ahead and they took care of my trigger today. I contacted them. They're going to uh, replace that trigger. But I just want to tell you, if you're relying on this as an income stream, make sure you have a second trigger always in your bag because you never know when something's going to go wrong. Hey, I hope you enjoyed looking through some of these images tonight. I hope you get a chance to get out and play and use some of these things that I showed you in uh, the pictures here. And I'd love to see what you're creating. And most importantly, I want you to remember, don't be lazy.